Hi, this is Ron Ball, and I welcome you again to Choose Greatness, your key to a happier, greater, better life. We've had the most fun series of programs. I have enjoyed my guest greatly. He has contributed so much valuable information about real life and real success. Now, if you're just tuning in today, let me give you a quick recap. We've been talking about uh, my guest, Ken Woods, uh, his experience with his family as they built and developed a large Amway business. And again, we're not promoting Amway. We're just using his experience as an opportunity to teach certain key entrepreneurial lessons of success. And I want you to learn this because I know that many of you struggle financially. And I care about that. I don't want you to go through life stressed and full of anxiety and uh, worried at night whether you're going to pay your bills on time. I don't want you to have that uh, difficulty haunting you on a daily basis. So I'm excited about your opportunity to get free, to uh, overcome these things. And God, I believe, can bless you with success opportunity. Now, you may have to do the opportunity. You may have to uh, put in the effort and the commitment and the work and the dedication and the determination, but God wants to give you an open door to do something better with your life. Uh, I've quoted this verse on this program previously. I'm about to do it again. John 10, 10, where Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So God is willing to take you out of the margins if you're willing to jump on board and go for the ride. Now, we've been discussing, Ken, a number of principles about success, and you have already highlighted certain key areas such as hard work and good attitude and uh, the willingness to, uh, to be uh, teachable, to be humble, to learn, and you've done a great job emphasizing uh, those vital areas of success. But I want to talk about something else on this final program together. I want to look at challenges, adversity, the things that go wrong, that go bad, because building a successful business, and your family has done that, and now you're working with thousands of people in the Latin world who are building their successful businesses. And I know you would agree that it's not always easy, that there are things that go wrong. Well, let's go back to your mom and dad for a moment and talk about some uh, adversities they faced, some challenges they went through, some things where sometimes where things just went bad uh, and how they handled it. Can you, can you give us some insight into that? Sure. Well, you know, we've been in business as a family for, gosh, I think coming up on 36 years. And so in a period of time like that, of course, you're going to have real life happen. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're doing this right now, and it's, it's about a, uh, a month after the, the uh, big hurricane hit Puerto Rico. And the same thing happened to my parents' business uh, when uh, a hurricane hit them in Miami. And, um, you know, that was a tough time because they lost a lot of business. They uh, had uh, part of their organization relocate because people's homes were destroyed. Mm. Um, so they were... They were and these are track. people they were in business with who, who were part of their organization. Part of their organization who were good friends and who they were really on track. They were moving really uh, strongly in a certain direction and then all of a sudden something completely out of their control like the weather um, you know, impacted their life and changed things forever. Um, you know, learning to roll with the punches sometimes is something that you have to be able to figure out. Uh, so that, that's something that, that I saw have, you know, happen within our business. Something else was uh, people passing away, uh, people going through divorces, um, people having big financial problems or problems with their children, you know, real life issues, right? Things that you have happen if you're part of a church or part of a family uh, or just have, you know, you have a neighbor or a close friend um, and learning to overcome some of those challenges. Um, so you trust God and you just get back in the, in the battle. You get back in the fight. You don't give up. You continue to build. Is that what your parents did? It is. That's what they did, you know, and uh, it was not without setbacks, right? You know, there's uh, two different kinds of setbacks that can occur. One is you can get comfortable in a, in a situation and not choose to grow and move forward. Or another is, um, you know, you have struggles that you have to take a step back and, and learn how to deal with them 
uh, maybe get some help, mentorship like we talked about before, or counseling, or um, you know, more education mm -hmm. on a matter, and then um, you know, get back on the horse and, and keep working. <laughs> keep right? riding. Keep riding. Well, I heard a pastor say a number of years ago that when difficulties, adversities, and challenges erupt in your life, you have a very simple choice. You can become better or you can become bitter, but that is a personal decision. You can respond and say, God, I'm ready for you to teach me, help me, develop me, grow me, or you can become angry and resentful and poison your own life because if you resent your circumstances, that's toxic. That will destroy your opportunity to grow. But if you grow with it, then you expand, you develop, you elevate, and God makes you better and you can do more. Do you agree with that? I do. I do agree with that. You know, I heard somebody else say, uh, there's a, a gentleman very successful in our business named Tim Foley. And, I know uh, Tim, right? Yeah. Good friend of mine. He was a Miami Dolphins football player and very successful in this yeah, business. I don't know if our viewers know this, but those of you old enough, and pardon me for interrupting, sure. Ken, those of you old enough might remember the only undefeated NFL professional football team in history, the Miami Dolphins, who went uh, through the whole regular season, won every game, won every playoff game, and won the Super Bowl. It's not happened before. It's not happened since. Well, Tim Foley was a member of that team, a starter on that team. Very successful. Now, keep going. Yeah, so, so one thing that I remember him saying once, uh, and I remember where this was, and you just, you talking just reminded me of it, um, was, you know, in, in life, things happen. And sometimes you have these incredible setbacks, emotionally uh, devastating or financially devastating. And like you said, you can either get better or get bitter. And Tim would say, you know, you need to ask yourself this question. What is God trying to teach me oh, right that's now? That's a great one. Is it? Do you like that? I like that. Keep going. Say that again. Yeah. What is God trying to teach me right now and through this situation? And, and this is one of those things that, you know, it takes, he was saying that from experience in life right, and, right. and it takes a certain level of humility and an ability to step outside of yourself and say, well, what am I going to do about this? How am, I, how am I going to respond to this? Because that's really the only thing we can control is how we respond to situations. Sometimes we just can't, can't you know. Well, you've mentioned, you mentioned external challenges, the weather, uh, something happening in your business organization, someone dying. Uh, you've mentioned things that affect you from the outside. Sure. What have you seen in people, anybody, what have you seen that creates um, a person's own challenge? In other words, uh, do you encounter situations where somebody is their own worst enemy, where they mess up, where they do something? Can you give some examples where the problem is in me? Sure. Sure. And, you know, and, and, you know this is tough because um, this can happen at any age, at any um, situation in life, no matter what your, your uh, income level is or your education level. I've seen and help people uh, deal with um, health issues, right? Um, internally, whether um, they struggle with something or um, infidelity or, um, you know, a situation where they, um, as an individual, maybe um, have done something where they have cheated somebody or they have done wrong to somebody and now they're paying the consequence for it. Um, you know, those are tough. How do you deal with a person like that? If, and this is true for some of you watching. You have a family member, you have a friend who messed up. I mean, they blew it. They just totally messed up and they were wrong. I mean, they, they violated a law or they violated one of God's moral laws, but now they're sorry. Now they're repentant, as the Bible says. Now they want help. How do you deal with that person? You know, and this is tough. This is really tough because if you were the person that was affected negatively and on the receiving end of their, uh, of their problem or their issue, um, you have to learn to forgive them. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean uh, forget, um, but you need to um, let go of the issue yourself personally. That's been my experience because if you can let go of it, then you, you relieve this burden off of yourself mm -hmm. in, in working with them. Uh, and then you need to put them through some sort of process where they regain the trust 
that they right. may have lost within the organization or within your business or company. So if someone really was sorry, very repentant and wanted help, you wouldn't necessarily kick them out. If they really wanted help, would you try to help them? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I think that's what, as Christians, we're all called to do. Um, but, you know, I temper that with saying, um, you know, you might have to give something some time. Um, be you know, you just reminded me of something, and this is an unplanned moment in this show. And sometimes those are God's moments. They're, they're the best moments. So I want to I wanna alert you to something that Ken just made me think of about marriage, about family. I came across a study just a few months ago. You'll find this fascinating. A study about adulterous couples. And what I found in the study totally surprised me. This study said that over 90% of the time, now that's huge, right? That's almost everybody. Mm -hmm. Over 90% of the time, a husband who cheats on his wife, over 90% of the time, within 12 months, one year, he wants to come back, fix his marriage, and reconcile with his wife. But over 90% of the time, the wife won't do it. She files for divorce almost immediately within that first year and ends up worse off economically, especially worse off financially. It's an amazing study. It's a generational study. Went on for decades and found that most men, when they cheat, are really sorry and want to come back. And most women won't let them come back. And if they did let them come back, if they did forgive them, assuming they really were sorry, mm -hmm. if they really did forgive them, then they would make a stronger, better marriage if they just weathered that crisis together. Isn't that an amazing study? Wow. But the women are so hurt and they're so devastated and they're so angry that they just want to punish that man so they divorce really fast. And what happens, the man who is now discouraged over the divorce Marry somebody else and it's too late. And then the kids are caught in the middle. It's one of the most fascinating studies of divorce and remarriage I've ever seen in my life. But it really goes to the point of forgiveness you just talked about. They, the study concluded that if the wife would just give that wayward husband a chance, they could build a greater marriage together than they had before. It's really possible. But they just have to give it a chance. But that's what you do in business. You give them a chance, right? It is, you know, and, and that, that's a tough, wow, that's a tough study. It is. Oh, it's, it's, it's hey, and I'm not saying it's easy for these women. No. I'm not saying just flippantly, oh, just forgive him and forget it. I mean, this, this stabs you to the heart. Absolutely. This kind of betrayal. Kind but, of, but it does give hope if you do forgive. Go ahead. You know, I was going to say, you know, those type of personal betrayals, I think, you know, and I've seen some of those, unfortunately, over the years of business, uh, you know, that's really hard to overcome. But people do. People overcome it every day. And my experience is that's when, again, you need to have, you know, counseling. You need to have the right community around you. You need to have um, a willingness to go through a process to make sure that the reconciliation can occur for both sides. And Because and it takes time to heal. It does. And that happens in business, too. Business relationships, there are divorces, so to speak, in business relationships because of problems that occur. And... Sometimes those things are necessary because people just need to separate and go different ways. And other times, reconciliation can occur, but that's a process. Most people are not willing to go through the process. That's well, part of that's the problem. Well, that's like the study I just quoted. Uh, the study concluded that most injured wives who are deeply hurt mm -hmm. divorce too fast. They just do it too quickly and don't give the chance for the process to create healing. Yep. And, that's, and then, then uh, of course, economically, and there are lots of financial statistics on this, the women usually become economically worse off after that. That's just uh, an unfortunate fact of our economic reality in this country. So now you're talking about business, I'm talking about marriage, but the same principles really apply Absolutely. here. Because when you refuse to forgive someone, that creates a toxic reaction in you. Uh, that injures you because you harbor that poison in your own heart. And that's why Jesus said, if someone has wronged you, he says this in the Gospels, mm -hmm. if someone has wronged you, forgive them. Now, I think Jesus is actually targeting that because he wants to help the person who's hurt also. I agree with you. Because you don't want to live under that burden. Now, you grew up in a Christian home, Christian family. 
Did. Uh, with your parents. Now, you're married, you have two sons, and um, you and I had an interesting conversation between shows where we talked about the ongoing legacy of what your parents started that you're continuing with your children. That is one of the great powerful facets I've learned of the Amway business that there is a generational blessing I've seen because I've worked with Amway leaders for over 25 years now and I've seen a lot of generational blessing continue through uh, different decades and different people. Well, I want to look at that for a moment with you. Uh, what have you learned from your parents that you've passed on to your sons? You know, it's a, that's, a, that's an interesting topic, in my opinion. You know, my, so my dad came from a, a, a blue-collar a blue family. Policeman? Policeman. He was a policeman. His dad was a, an airline mechanic. And uh, my dad was the first to go to college in his family. And, and he kind of changed the, the direction of where his, his, his background was going to move to. And, and we've continued to perpetuate that, fortunately, through having a family business together. And I think that's what many people would love to see happen in their own lives. And, and not just financially, but having something with, that keeps them together, uh, faith and other things. That you can pass things, on. That you can pass on. And, it's, and that's, that's something to strive for. That's not easy. Um, you know, we've been very blessed. Uh, God's blessed us greatly as a family and through good times and bad. You know, you never know sometimes why things happen and for what reason. But my wife and I have, you know, two amazing boys. Um, you know, one of them, we have an 18-year-old and a 16-year-old. One of them is, uh, uh, you know, to back up, my wife, we homeschool them, which is code for my wife homeschooled them and I helped. We've had some shows on that. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some programs on yes. that because we homeschooled our children. But go yeah. ahead. So we homeschooled our, both our boys, my wife did, and uh, uh, we live here in Florida. Fortunately in Florida, in high school, you can even do dual enrollment. So my, my oldest uh, did two years of college while he was in high school and graduated with his associate's degree mm -hmm. and his high school degree. And now he's at University of Central Florida studying to be an electrical engineer. But the, the, and I have a 16-year-old son also and uh, he's in high school and what's been fun is um, having an entrepreneurial family and doing something as a family has allowed us to think differently countercultural thinking if you will you know we focus on doing things as a family um, helping each other and and helping to give somebody a, a well-balanced what we hope to give is a well-balanced life you know thoughts on finances and health and relationships and their faith and their spiritual life and their spiritual growth and the ability to um, think about more than just themselves. Now, having grown up with an entrepreneurial Amway developing business mom and dad, what is something Amway specific from having lived that way yep. that you passed on to your son? Something specific to that life the biggest thing I would say that came out of that would have been this idea of personal development. And, and it has never been more important than it is today. Mm. You know, you mentioned it uh, in a previous episode where we were talking in a previous show where uh, you were talking about how many different careers people have in today's society and how it's a different world. They jump around. They do. And, and that's not just with younger people, it's all ages now. Um, job security is not what it was before. So, but what's one thing you can take with you? Yourself. And, but you, so you can either take your best self or your worst self, right? Or an average version of yourself. And what we've been encouraging our boys to do is to be avid learners, right? To pick topics and develop themselves and to understand that that, that process is what's important. And your Amway experiences encourage that. Absolutely. Now, I love what you said about you can take your best self, your worst self, but did you hear what he said? He mentioned your average self. And when you said that, my immediate thought was, who wants to spend their whole life and just develop an average self? Who wants to do that? When you have all this opportunity that God gives you to become a greater, better person. That's why this program is called Choose Greatness. And also, notice, it's not just called greatness, it's called choose greatness. It's something you have to do. You have to participate in your development. You have to make a commitment. You have to do something to make it happen. 
and you pass that on to your sons. And I think that's very exciting because at 16 and 18, it gives them a foundation to build the life, the great life that God wants them to have. And your children can do that as well. Uh, some of you have kids still at home. Some of you have children, grandchildren uh, whom you love with all your heart. And did you hear what Ken emphasized? They've learned personal commitments, personal development. Don't teach your children to be selfish. Don't teach your children to be spoiled. Don't teach your children to be an average version or even worst version of their potential selves. Teach them to be the best version of who God can make them. And that should be a goal for all of you as parents because that will be foundational for a better, greater life. It also ought to be a great witness for Jesus Christ to the larger world. Now, I want to deal with one more thing before we finish. And I warned you uh, earlier today when we were talking that I was going to introduce something that sounds negative, but it's not. So I'm going to get you started okay. and then I'll finish it and you'll see where we're going. When you look at the whole Latino slash Hispanic world, and that we have a large audience watching right now, and as you said, we all bleed the same. We're all made in God's image. Yep. We may have different cultural, genetic things that we inherit, but we're all human beings made by God. We're all the same. Having said that, there are cultural differences. That's just a fact of life. Sure. What do you see, and, and, and I'm not wanting you to be negative, but just be honest, what challenges do you see in people who come from a Latin culture? What challenges do they specifically have because of that culture in building a successful business for themselves? Hmm. You know, there, there are several things that I've witnessed over the years. One is um, the stereotypical roles in families where the, uh, the dad or the man in the house has a strong stereotypical role. Sometimes that can be negative. Um, like he's overly forceful or he's exactly. too dominant. Too dominant, overly forceful. And then the other one is, um, is a lack of personal self-worth. That's interesting. I think that um, people mask that in a lot of different ways. But a lot of people in my experience um, in some of the Latin cultures, you know, unfortunately, maybe they, especially when they came over here, they haven't had the ability to... Um, get the education that maybe they would have liked to or uh, financially they've found themselves in a glass ceiling world where they haven't been able to rise up to the level of their uh, ability because of just not being given opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so um, choosing to be an entrepreneur has allowed them to do that for themselves. So it allows them to become, to rise to their expectations. Absolutely. And be who God has made them to be you know, where they're not under the thumb of somebody else because they can choose greatness, like you said, and, and work um, with whatever level they feel and choose to do to become successful in life. So what would you say to our audience about success to, to this Latino, larger Latino slash Hispanic audience? What would you say to them that is specific to the culture many of their families have come from? What would you alert them to that they need to be focused on if they're going to really be successful? Not, and I'm going to put you on the spot here, Ken. Not just some general, oh, work hard, but something that's specific to them. What, what should they focus on that will help them have a breakthrough, help them move up to a better life? Wow, that's I know, that's I'm, get, tough. I know I'm getting that it. That is tough. But I think you can do this. Um, you know, I would say I would I would say this. You know, God God has a plan for you, and He has a plan for all of us, and we need to be prepared to go through the process, and that's hard. Um, you know, if you're if you're especially if you're a first generation or even second generation uh, Hispanic Latino person or or family, you realize that um, you know here in the U.S. even though it's a land of opportunity, people aren't going to give you uh, anything. You have to work for it, and you have to be prepared to run the distance. I think that's the struggle. Uh, people don't want to do that. They, they want a shortcut. They, they want it to happen as fast as, you know, microwave popcorn. And that just doesn't happen, <laughs> right? Good example. So, and you know, with, with the internet and, and mobile technology and the fact that everything's done on phones, that, um, 
Everything cultural is running against us to help that process. They need to be able to understand that they're going to have to work hard to, to overcome all these other obstacles. Well, my good friend Dexter Yeager, whom I've quoted before, who mentored me in the business and financially, used to say, you don't get rich quick, you get rich slow and steady. And there's a great, great truth in that because what he means is you have to develop as a person as you develop your business. And that's part of what you've been talking about. Absolutely. Kent, this has been so great. Thank you so much for Thank doing you. this. Tell your mom and dad I said hello. I will. Would Thanks, you? Ron. Tell them to watch this show. Be, be kind of a promoter of our program. I will. And uh, let me say to all of you watching, I had this man on this program for one important reason. So you could see a living result of parents who deliberately taught not just spiritual principles, but success principles, who combined those things so that this man would grow spiritually, but also he would grow in discipline and organization and commitment and success and attitude, positive attitude, great attitude. We, we could do a whole show on great attitude. That would be a great show. And Ken, please come back. I'd like to ask you some more questions at some points. So I hope you'll be willing to sure. come back. And again, those of you watching, I just want you to do so well. I, I just want God to explode blessings in your life. Uh, there's a great verse in Ezekiel that talks about showers of blessing. Well, I want you to get wet, okay, with a lot of showers of blessing. And to help you do that, I want to give you some resources that are specifically targeted to you, your children, your family. I've mentioned them on all the shows we've done for the last few weeks. And I'm not going to highlight these on every show, but I'm doing it again today. Two things at ChooseGreatness.com. ChooseGreatness.com. The book, Choose Greatness, and the audio set, The Success Test. God bless you. Mm -hmm.